Why do trans women make such good political scapegoats? Is it our bone density? Do we run faster than other scapegoats? Why do conservative politicians routinely use trans women as the boogeyman? Well, firstly, it's boogie woman, respect my truth. And secondly, because they can? Liberal MP Catherine Deves has been at the center of this controversy in the lead up to the election. Half of all males with trans identities are sex offenders, and trans children are surgically mutilated and sterilized in the furtherance of an unattainable idea, uh, which she assures me she made in good faith and do not reflect any bias against trans people at all. Of course not. Why would it? But I want to take a broader approach to this debate because it keeps popping up like a hydra that does crossfit, so let's jump in, but not any higher or further than any other woman. This debate is much more complex than some people are willing to admit, which puts trans people on the back foot because a nuanced argument about gender and biology is always going to be a harder sell than saying boys strong, girls weak, a position which most people are willing to accept without much scrutiny but it does require scrutiny. The other problem is that most people are totally ignorant to what hormone replacement therapy actually does to a body in transition, and they vastly underestimate how dramatic those changes really are. And when I say dramatic, I mean dramatic. Now, of course, I love sport. I love well, you know the names of sports. I know that makes me un-Australian or whatever, but, but I, I hate sport. I don't give a shit whether you let me play sport or not. And that's actually something that I and the Liberal Party have in common. They don't really give a shit about trans women in sport either. They give a shit about rallying a conservative base around a highly contentious but entirely imagined problem in order to win an election that is quickly slipping from their grasp. And I just think that it's important to remind everyone that's the reason we're having this conversation. You might have noticed that I haven't mentioned trans men or non-binary people, and that's because they are largely ignored by the anti-trans rhetoric rife in this debate. If this were actually about genetics dictating fairness in sport, you would expect trans men to get equal coverage, but they don't, even when they win. This is Chris Mosier, a trans man, that is, someone assigned female at birth who later came out as a man. He is a triathlete who in 2019 won two national championships. And if you've never heard of him, but you have heard of Laurel Hubbard and Leah Thomas, then you should ask yourself why. If this debate is really about genetic advantages, why don't trans women receive equal coverage when they lose? If trans women have the huge advantage that people say we do, then why do we keep losing? Why aren't we at the top of every women's sport? I mean, we've been allowed to compete with cis women in the Olympics since 2004, and so far only one of us has even qualified. Do we just not want it enough? I know I don't. By the way, you might have just heard me use the term cis, and if you're wondering right now what does cis mean, then it's you. You're cis. If you don't know what cis means, you're cis. Then there was the controversy around Laurel Hubbard, the first openly trans woman to compete in the Olympic Games, the backlash to which was extraordinary, with people catastrophizing that this would be the end of women's sport. And then, well, she failed to complete a single lift and was beaten by literally every other woman in the event. So if it's not even a thing, then why are we here? This debate is actually a proxy for a broader push to exclude trans people from society altogether. So let's talk about Catherine Deves and TERFs. She might look like a harmless getaway host, but she's anything but. Catherine is the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison's captain's pick. Captain's pick, we make everything about sport, no wonder this is such a touchy subject. Hope you checked the chromosomes, Morrison. You wouldn't want a man on the team. He actually would prefer a man on the team. When Catherine's old tweets saying trans people were mutilated and trans women are sex offenders and trans activists are basically Nazis emerged, she came under fire from the media. You're right though, trans activists are Nazis. In fact, here's a picture of a bunch of trans people hanging out with Nazis. Oh wait, no, that's us having our medical records burned and being sent to the death camps. Never mind. What makes the turf unique among transphobes is that they veil their transphobia in feminist nomenclature. But they are not feminists. They routinely collude with far-right and conservative Christian groups to enact laws that make it harder for trans people to exist. 
even if those groups are openly opposed to women's rights in general. And the last time I checked, feminists aren't supposed to do that. Even though she's campaigning about sport, it is clear that this is a much broader issue to her than mere sport inclusion. And it's for that reason I don't think she intends to stop when the whistle blows. Is that a sport thing? I, I don't know. A recent poll by Binary Australia found that 67% of Australians believe trans women should be excluded from sport. That seems high. Who is Binary Australia, you ask? Well, you might know them by their dead name, Marriage Alliance Group, who campaigned against marriage equality, but then transitioned to focusing on trans people after the nation decided that anti-marriage equality groups could go f*** themselves. And you'd never believe it, they love Catherine Deves. So, you have an anti-marriage equality group pivoting to be a trans hate group supporting you, and a religious fundamentalist prime minister who once said women should count themselves lucky they don't get shot when they march in protests supporting you, and you've got far-right party One Nation aligned with you, and you've got another religious conservative, Don Perrottet, going into bat with his manly man chromosomes for you. Catherine Deves, do you really expect anyone to believe this has anything to do with protecting women? Well, of course you expect them to believe it, and you're right to. Everyone will believe it. No one f***ing listens to us. And it's at this point that you'll hear people say things like, Okay, I don't mind them so much in running or swimming, but surely you don't think it's safe for trans women to be in MMA? Are you asking me if it's safe for two people of any gender to get into a ring and kick each other in the head? No. No, that isn't safe. That's not a safe activity for anyone. Look how Joe Rogan turned out. No one who has ever started a podcast is okay. There was a sensationalized story going around, promulgated by Rogan, that trans MMA fighter Fallon Fox broke an opponent's skull. This picture was widely circulated with editorials on Fallon Fox's career, and it's shocking. Many people were outraged at this photo associated with articles about Fallon Fox. But this is a photo of Kay Hansen, a woman that Fallon Fox never fought. Now why would people feel the need to commit a fraud like this if there were truth to their claims? Most cis people being introduced to this debate are unaware that they're wandering into a minefield of turfs, liars, essentialists, and bigots, all with one goal in mind. Everyone is so scared that the transgenders are going to break gender and everyone's gender is going to pour out and ants will get in it. But honestly, gender has been broken for a long time, honey, and sex isn't much better. It isn't about fairness in women's sport. It's about cruelty to trans people. And concerns about real women are just the delivery system that makes it palatable. The factors that make women good at sport are myriad and inscrutable. There is so much diversity of genetics and ability amongst women, and trans women are merely an equal and beautiful part of that. Don't be fooled into thinking this is about sport. This is about othering and villainizing trans people who are just trying to live their lives. The vast majority of trans people in sport are playing for fun, to make friends, to feel like they are part of a group after being shunned and ridiculed and victimized by society their entire lives, and now they can't even have this. Thank you for your time. Every cis person now owes me $20. Authorized by P. Usting. Get up, Sydney.